An old sailor, an old time thing, an old song, rolling down to Rio by the sea. A young sailor in his time to sing the new song, flying down to Rio, come with me. Okay, you fans of Ray Raymond Chandler, the one of the greatest novelists of the 20th century in my opinion. I'm going to take you fans of hard-boiled detective fiction. I'm going to take you to where Ra the great Raymond Chandler lived in 1932 and 1933. This is where he f wrote his first short story, Blackmailers Don't Shoot. And it, ironically, it came out in December 1933, like that song I was just playing from Flying Down to Rio with Fred Astaire. We're at 4616 Greenwood Place in Los Feliz. As you can see, most of this stuff is all recent built, but I would say 98% of Los Feliz looks the way it did in the 1930s when uh, the great Raymond Chandler lived here, the uh, king and the genius, and the... Uh, the, the terrific ability to write seething similes in all his stories. And here you go, 4616. And look at, as you can see, it looks the way it did in the 1930s. And uh, I could just see him sitting in that little alcove there, that little uh, uh, courtyard, writing his first short story. Uh, he ha he started it when he was 42 years old. I'm sorry, 44. And he had just gotten fired from the Dabney Oil Syndicate. He was a bookkeeper and then later an executive because he was always drunk, they said, and he was always hidden in all the women. But here you go, and thankfully they fired him because if they wouldn't have fired him, and, and what would it be in the Deep Depression, the depths of the Depression in 1932, his friends actually gave him $100 to live on for a month, per month, for a whole year. Because uh, he, has, he, he was a witness at one of their trials. They worked, I guess, for the Dabney Oil Syndicate. But here you go. This is where he wrote his first short story that came out in Black Mask uh, Detective Pulp Magazine. And as you can see, like I said before, thankfully it's still here. It even looks the same. And the way the description of all his uh, uh, places in his uh, short stories and novels what with the Spanish tile and that Spanish motif and I could just see him here typing away thanks to his friends like I said and thank thankfully that he, he did get fired and thankfully he was able to uh, knock out that that uh, great prose that great fiction here and as you can see it's pretty quiet thanks a lot to uh, the fact that the people are ob obviously not here and uh, we're a couple of blocks south of Los Feliz uh, Boulevard and it's a couple of uh, uh, maybe a mile south of uh, Griffith Park and I'm going to take you fans of Raymond Chandler to a couple of the places in my opinion the most significant places where he wrote his uh, greatest novels he did have a lot. He was peripatetic on steroids. So uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where and what. But in my, my opinion, in the way I'm looking at it, I, I think I'll just uh, start with the most significant places he lived. Where he uh, actually started a revolution in hard-boiled detective uh, stories and novels. And uh, this place where he lived right here, this is where it all started. In the words of Emerson... A revolution every revolution was first they thought in one man's mind and and man did he uh, create a revolution and uh, okay well one of my favorite quotes or actually one of my favorite lines was from the long goodbye 1953 he was a guy who talked with commas like a heavy novel over the phone anyway and I just want to say that it's amazing and I even wonder if the people back in the 20s and 30s and even the 40s if they were that original and uh, I think I think TV destroyed everybody's uh, individuality everybody's char own character and now in my opinion we're all walking cliches and it's too bad 
because everybody I wonder like I said if everybody really did talk and act that way and of course we can only go by movies and radio and uh, and literature from that time but uh, too bad we lost all that that American individuality and uh, I just want to say that of all the three great novelists of the 20th century in my opinion Hemingway with his terseness and brevity and Fitzgerald with his uh, metaphors on steroids and of course uh, Raymond with his fantastic seething similes and I don't know why like when you go to Monterey California or you go to like New Orleans they have plaques that signify and say this is what happened here historically and only in LA I don't know why they don't they don't memorialize any of these places I'm even shocked that this place is still standing and uh, I don't like I said I don't get it why we don't have like like memorials or plaques or whatever saying or signifying what happened in this spot I think what was that 82 years ago in 1930 1932 and he was like I said he was only 44 and man what an age to start writing and what a way what an ability what a what a talent to write at that age but of course he would have been that obviously that whole 44 years developing his worldview in order to give us this type of literature and what a revolution like I said and uh, okay well I'm gonna follow through with a couple places like I just said about where where uh, he lived in a significant part of his life and this where he wrote the couple of the greatest novels of all time and thankfully most of them are still there and uh, and I just want to say that of all the the characters that played Philip Marlowe in my opinion and of course in Raymond Chandler's opinion Dick Powell was the he was like the ultimate perfect I mean he it was just like looking at Philip Marlowe come out of the pages when you saw Dick Powell so I'll, I'll never understand why they put Humphrey Bogart in the big sleep I don't get it but like I said Raymond Chandler agreed with me with my opinion and uh, okay like I said black mailers don't shoot he wrote here and he saw it published nine, December 1933 and uh, he lived with Sissy his wife who was 18 years older than him and uh, thank you Raymond wherever you're at for that fantastic uh, wonderful enjoy, enjoyment that you gave us for all these uh, great stories and novels that started here okay thanks a lot and I just want to say that I did go to where uh, Fitzgerald I happened to get lucky that day I got a scoop from heaven that day it was empty the apartment where Fitzgerald died where he was writing the love of the last tycoon so if you're at all interested please subscribe to my channel and you can see that video where Fitzgerald lived the last couple of months of his life okay well follow me and let's go to a couple of other residences where uh, Raymond Chandler lived in the 1930s and 40s. Okay, let's go. Thank you.